Do you think that most Hollywood filmmakers started out as quote unquote working class filmmakers? Or do you think that there was something that was different in their journey? Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to say. I'm, I'm certainly not a Hollywood filmmaker, so it's hard to know exactly. But from, you know, what I've gathered over the years, watching many interviews, going to film festivals, meeting some filmmakers that I love, um, it, I've understood that I feel like there's two paths to do it. There's the the hardest path, which is almost like playing the lottery, which is essentially making sure you know you are in the right place at the right time with the right people and you have a bunch of connections and you have a bunch of you know people around you who know how to make this happen and you're also privileged enough to you know have all those connections fall into place so you know that's tough because you know 99 percent of people can't quite get there um but i think a lot of times the other route which is kind of i guess the way i'd like to go which is maybe the the road less traveled, which I feel like, you know, is just making many smaller films over a period of time and, and trying to make an impact with that, you know, and seeing what can happen and seeing what is available to you with, you know, the resources you have around you. Um, so I would certainly kind of look at it that way. Um, but it is certainly interesting because I think a lot of times people think the Hollywood way is the only way. And I think with, with time, uh, people are seeing that it's not. Well, since you've done music videos, um, you've probably seen bands or artists, whatever, in the music industry that probably maybe they didn't set out to be big names, but then somehow their career took them that way. I wonder if that's just the way it happens. It's just people that just really have a desire to tell something, whether it's through music or, or film, and then it ends up taking them there. Yeah, um, I got to work with a, a rapper out of Baton Rouge named Caleb Brown, who recently got signed to Rostrum Records a couple years back. And that was, you know, Mac Miller and Wiz Khalifa's label. Um, and, you know, I kind of got a little peek behind the curtain of how a big label runs. And it was really interesting because, you know, they in their instance were really kind and they let him do a lot of his own stuff. And, you know, they got to uh, really trust their artist, which I think is rare. Um, the little bit of understanding I could gather, and that's certainly different because it's the music industry, um, was that a lot of, you know, labels don't run that way. And so it was, it was interesting to kind of get a glimpse of that, um, and then kind of apply it to what I do, which is the film industry, uh, which also does not always run that way. Because I think a lot of times, if you do get into the big league, so to speak, you sometimes have to compromise some of your morals or your values or the types of films you want to make. You may have to you know, make that rent check. So you just do something that kind of, you know, takes you off the path that you're hoping to go. And sometimes you end up down that path for a while and you kind of forget the original path. And so, you know, I always try to, you know, as best as possible, stay connected to the, the source message of, uh, you know, what resonates with me as an artist. And it seems like so many artists, whatever the genre, uh, start out as more the introverted kid in their bedroom doodling or you know creating music or, or doing a little film set and they're not really looking to be part of that big group they just love doing that and then if they're really good it somehow takes them out into the big group and then they're like wait a minute i don't know if i want to be here i like doing it on my own I, that's yeah. where i feel safe you know yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's certainly really interesting because I, I kind of feel that on a personal level for myself. Like, um, I love going to big crews. And uh, when I was doing music videos, like we, we did a giant crew for one. And it was weird because it was like, I don't touch that camera like that. That's his job is like it would be weird if I went over and touched that camera. And like for me, coming from North Carolina, like sometimes we would pass the camera around to like see different people's ideas. And, and like, that's just not the way it works on a professional set. And that's okay, and that's by design. And certainly like my films now, I don't do that. But it, it's just interesting kind of like, you know, life happens fast, but sometimes you blink and you find yourself on those bigger sets. And it's certainly a very cool experience. But then sometimes, you know, people say, oh, once I'm there, I'm never going back. Uh, one of the things I did while I was making that music video was I was making that couple hundred dollar TV show in Louisiana, um, Home Remedy. And two days after I did that big shoot, I drove a couple hours down uh, across Louisiana for a shoot on the TV show. 
And it was just me and two people with a Canon 60. And so it was like, you know, I, I just wanted to make that story. And that wasn't the story that was going to pay my bills. You know, the music video was. But it was something to me that I didn't feel like, you know, just because I got here didn't mean I couldn't go back to my roots when I wanted to. So we heard you almost didn't go to film school. Evan, is that true? I thought about a couple different options. Um, I ended up going to film school because I loved the professors who I met. I went to a very small film school that's within a larger art department uh, at East Carolina University in North Carolina. And, and I love the, the the faculty who were there because they they truly were very realistic with me about the odds of filmmaking, um, which you would think would scare people off. <laughs> but to me, actually, I appreciated the the earnestness and the honesty and the sincerity that they said there. They basically said, you know, we'll teach you how to make a film but it's not going to guarantee that you're going to go be Spielberg. And I had just gone through a bunch of college tours at the time with people saying, hey, do you want to be the next Spielberg? Do you want to be the next this? And, and and it felt gimmicky, you know, and you could kind of feel a little bit of the pull. Um, and I mean, of course, someone's going to be the next whatever, right? That's just how the world works. But the odds are that it's probably not going to be you. So instead of billing it as do you want to be the next insert famous person here, it was billed to me as, do you want to know how to do this to almost like learning a craft, like welding or something like that. And, and to me, that was more interesting. Um, so they, they pitched that and they also pitched like more practical ways to use filmmaking, you know, shooting corporate videos, music videos, weddings, things like that. Like, I think a lot of times film schools try to like shove that part under the rug a little bit and they say, well, that's not glamorous. We're, we're only going to teach you the the cool stuff, you know, but, but they kind of opened the whole toolbox and I certainly appreciated that. Um, and I think I've taken a little bit of that with me along the way. It seems like so much of anything that's, um, I mean, did you watch the last dance? Yeah. So if you, if you look at some of it, it's incredibly glamorous right. and you see, but then the, the, the viewer was allowed to go behind the scenes mm -hmm. to some parts that were very, very painful. And right. then some parts that weren't that glamorous, but we don't really think about that. So I think that it seems like for a lot of professions, like these, the creme de la creme, we don't really see that a lot of it isn't glamorous and a lot of it's tedious. And so I, I think it's great that your professor or professors were a little more realistic with you and yeah. didn't try to make it seem, you know, because I think then people get blindsided and then yeah. they're, they have dashed expectations they do yeah and, and i think that's why there's a lot of burnout in the film industry and that's why people you know turn to things and there's a lot of mental health issues people don't talk about and there's just a lot of things that i think um don't need to be there if we don't set the expectation at steven spielberg you know if, if we maybe set the expectation at you're learning a you know a craft you're learning how to do this so you can tell the stories you want to tell certainly doesn't mean anyone's going to watch, but I think it's a lot of times being realistic with it and also saying you can get these stories out of your head and put them out, you know, and, and hopefully with time people will see that and people will take notice. Um, and, and I appreciate the, like you said, the, the earnestness of that. Yeah.